If you're not yet quite convinced by the electric vehicle revolution, then maybe BMW's i3 could be the car to do it. This model is all the things you'd expect a compact EV to be. Refined, eco-conscious and super affordable to run. But it's also surprising when it comes to sheer driving enjoyment, thanks in large part to the light weight of a specially developed state-of-the-art carbon fibre and aluminium chassis. This improved model builds on that character with an extra, more focused i3S variant. And as before, there's the option of adding in a range extender petrol generator to alleviate driving range anxiety. It's all part of BMW's rather different approach to EV motoring. Two versions of this BMW are these days on offer, a standard variant with an electric motor rated at 170 HP and the top derivative that we're trying here, the Sportier i3S, which uses a motor rated at 184 HP. The handling of the S model has been uprated too, with a 40mm wider track, a 10mm lower ride height, larger 20-inch wheels and specially tuned springs, dampers and anti-roll bars. All of that makes this BMW feel even more planted and agile, and it embellishes this model's reputation as the first EV that's able to offer genuine driving enjoyment. Predictably also though, the i3S modifications further stiffen up the ride quality, and that was already quite firm in the standard i3. The engineers are uh, seeking to reduce the natural tendency of the tall, narrow body to roll around the corners. There is no kind of adaptive damping system to minimize the downside here, so even if you're set on an i3S, we'd advise that you also try the ordinary variant before you finally decide. As ever with an i3, whatever choice you make, you'll have the option of ordering your car in either full electric spec or in the range extender or REX form that around 75% of customers choose. Now the preference here is really down to peace of mind. The REX package adding in a Korean built two cylinder petrol generator, which can cut in to increase your driving range by around 80 miles should you run out of battery charge. You might think that to be an issue, given that some rivals can significantly better the distance possible between charges of this car's 94 amp hour, 33 kilowatt hour battery pack. They expect around 120 miles in real world terms. Still, charging can be relatively quick. Uh, it takes less than four hours using the seven kilowatt type two wall box that you'll need to get fitted to your garage. Find a high amperage DC charger at a garage or service station and up to 80% of battery charge can be replenished in just 40 minutes. At the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, a normal household plug point will uh, need 11 hours to completely recharge the car. This i3 is now the only compact electric vehicle on the market with really futuristic styling. Starting from a clean sheet of paper, uh, the BMW eDrive development team were able to create a lightweight body perfectly balanced to suit the specific needs of its electric power pack. The created weight saving could then be invested in larger batteries to improve the operating range. That was the idea anyway. Here is the reality with bodywork fabricated from the kind of aluminium and carbon fibre mix that you'll find on a McLaren supercar or an F1 Grand Prix racer. Those are the headlines. Uh, the reality is that most of the carbon fibre used is blended with plastic. That sounds far less exotic. Uh, still, what's important is the end result. Without the batteries, what we have here would be easily the lightest car on the market. And we certainly like the front end, which has introduced some subtle new vocabulary to BMW's well-established design language. Uh, the Munich maker's familiar double kidney grille is present and correct, but it's purely cosmetic because the electrically powered i3 doesn't require any cooling air, even if you choose one with a supplementary range extender petrol engine fitted out back. A more controversial touch is a sudden dip in the pronounced so-called stream flow shoulder line just rearwards of the front doors. Now this has apparently been incorporated so as to create a larger side window surface for the rear passenger compartment. But at first glance, it does look like a bit of an afterthought. You'll be glad it's there though if you have to take a seat in the back because otherwise this whole rear seat area would be a bit of a black hole. 
and pretty impossible to get into were it not for these opposing coach-style doors that open to reveal the lack of the kind of central B pillar that almost every other car in the world has to have. Now, backseat occupants would be pretty much trapped if this BMW had one, but the bodywork and chassis of an i3 are so stiff that a centre pillar is not necessary. So it is that, rather against the odds, what we have here is a car that's incredibly easy for anyone of any age to get in and out of. It is unfortunate, though, that the the rear doors can't be opened until the front one has been, which means that you'll always have to act like a chauffeur when you're dropping the kids off on the school run. Talk of children brings up a potentially deal-breaking point for family folk, uh, namely that only two people can actually be accommodated back here, even though three probably would fit at a squash thanks to the lack of the usual centre transmission tunnel. There's a totally flat floor up front too, and the roomy feeling you get is enhanced by the low window line and the tall, airy cabin. There's no conventional instrument cluster, just two high-definition LCD screens, one behind the steering wheel here and the other a large central monitor, which is now standardised at 10.25 inches in size. It's sighted at the top of the centre console, and it's big enough for rear seat folk to see. Uh, the gear selector and start-stop button share a stalk projecting from the steering column here and you engage gears using its incorporated rotary controller. Finally let's take a look in the boot uh, which has a rather restricted 260 litre capacity thanks to its high floor. There's lots that we really like about the i3. It has a premium feel that's missing from every other compact EV you can currently buy, something we think would translate into a genuinely special ownership proposition. And despite the fact that it's been around since 2013, it's still the most distinctive and interestingly styled car in the class. Plus, it's also the most innovative under the skin. And better still, this BMW remains, by some distance, the most rewarding electric car you could choose to drive, especially in this uprated i3 S guise. It's a car the segment needs. Try one and, perhaps to your surprise, you might find that you do too.